here we have a variety of microscopes that kind of span the history of microscopes and seeing very minute things with the aid of lenses. The first use was looking at biological specimens using a magnifying glass. That became a little awkward in that magnifying glasses are variable when you move them. You might lose uh, sight of what you're looking at. So someone finally came up with the idea of adding lenses to some kind of a rigid mount and using a light source to project the light up through the specimen and then you have a fixed tube with lenses. This is a compound microscope, meaning it's got more than one lens in it. Uh, a simple microscope would just have one lens, essentially a magnifying glass in a tube. On this particular one, we're looking at something from the early 1800s. It has no manufacturing marks, it has no dates, but uh, through various, you know, researching various things, this is common for the early 1800s. It's called a drum microscope because of its shape. It's, it's, it's essentially a drum that's a tower to hold the lenses. Underneath this part, which is called a stage, there are clips to hold a slide or a specimen. Focusing, this was, again, still very crude, you would move the tube up or down, and uh, obviously it's very crude. You could very easily miss a sharp focus because the tube is not uh, very well regulated when you're moving it up or down. But this was a giant step from just a plain magnifying glass. Next step was something like this. Again, this is early 1800s, mid 1800s. We have, again, a compound microscope. And this one is interesting in that the box that it comes in, it would break down and fit into this box. Uh, is actually the base. It screws into the top of the box and again we have a stage, a place for the, the, the sample or whatever we need and this particular one has a geared focus. Again it's compound in that it's got a lens here and a lens here and likely one internal. This one has again the mirror so you could focus light up through the bottom of the specimen and thereby getting a good view of what you need. Early to mid 1800s. Now we get fancier. This is kind of a European style Culpepper microscope. We're talking mid to later 1800s. Uh, you have a stage here with a spring clip so that the slide is in a firm uh, mount. We have a crude focus by moving the, this tube up or down. And this one is ornery today because it's not cooperating. All right, we have a finer focus by using the knob on the side with the gears here. It will move in a much finer manner than just the crude for focus of the drum telescope. But still, we have the mirror for light. Uh, again, this is the time prior to electricity, so you did not have any kind of illumination. This one is interesting in the fact that it's got a drawer with various other objectives, smaller lenses that would be the bottom, and uh, various other specimen carriers, things that would, this one is called a live well, so you could have in here some kind of a live specimen and put it in, this one goes below the stage, and be able to look at a live specimen before it's dead. But you can see craftsmanship here. Uh, this one was well used as the, the lacquer coating of, of the brass here has been worn off. Uh, you really don't want to handle brass instruments with bare fingers because you will leave fingerprints. Uh, we have evidence of some fingerprints, but most likely those are from the user.
who is not really concerned with preserving the uh, particular microscope. They're more interested in, in using the microscope. Again, a lot of craftsmanship went into microscopes. This one, uh, we're talking uh, maybe mid-1800s. It's actually heavier than any of the previous ones. Uh, again, we have a, an adjustable focus here, clips on the stage for holding specimens or slides. And beneath here, beneath the stage, we have what's called a condenser. So it will take the light that's reflected from the mirror here and essentially strengthen it, condense it, make it focus on a much finer uh, point. And this one actually has two focuses. This is actually a coarse focus and the knob here is a fine focus. Uh, there's a difference of maybe 10 to 1 in the gearing. So it would take 10 turns of this one to come anywhere near one turn of this one. So you could focus much finer. This is also a dual lens, actually two lens turret. You can change the objective just by flipping the lens at the bottom. We do have other lenses that would go in the top here. These are removable. And we have other strength of lenses that will fit in there. I think that's all that's in that case. And this one is engraved on the back, and it is, well, I don't have my glasses, so I can, can't really read the, okay, it's R and J Beck from London. So this was made in London about the 1850s. All right. Then we have a big jump to the 1930s. Germany was known for optical instruments. This one is by Carl Zeiss. The other is lights. So Zeiss and lights were both opticians, both uh, optical guys from Germany. Uh, Zeiss was from Jena, and uh, I forget who lights, where lights was from. But this is known as a student microscope. Awfully expensive for a student microscope, but uh, what we have here is, again, a coarse and fine focus. We have a movable tilt. We also have still, even in the 1930s, the mirror, although by that time you could get a light that would shine on the mirror, which would reflect up into the condenser. And, uh, give you a much better image. These had all kinds of options. You'd buy essentially the standard frame and then you could see this one has a three lens turret. You can buy different turrets. You could buy different objective lenses. Uh, you could buy different stages. This one's a, a circular one and can turn. Uh, and various other condensers and things like that. Uh, it's quite a change from our simple drum microscope. Today's microscopes are even better than the uh, Zeiss and Lights were back in the 30s. Uh, they're a lot fancier. They have more attachments. And in the 60s and 70s, we started to see 1960s and 70s, not 18. Uh, split lens things here so you could have more than one person uh, viewing it and then photographic and uh, video attachments. Things have progressed. <laughs>